This is an example of an e-foil prop guard, shroud, or duct. The intent of this video is to demonstrate how a prop guard will merely only reduce the chance of contact with the propeller at the expense of two things. It will introduce the chance of a more severe injury and it will introduce drag and reduce performance. Say this PVC pipe is your finger. There is still lots of large openings for an appendage to enter the prop area. Even more so if it is simply just a shroud or duct from either side. You now have a meat grinder effect, a blender or scissor action because of the supports of the guard or shroud or duct. Your appendage or finger is now trapped inside a cage with a scared animal in a sense, whereas I would prefer to have a chance encountering with said scared animal in the open. If you are truly, genuinely concerned about having an open propeller, the best propulsion method for you would be a jet or impeller option, where the propeller is completely shielded. If you check the description of this video, you will see a link to a youth Hawaiian surfer who lost his thumb in a shrouded, ducted e-foil for an example of a real life scenario. Those of you watching who are unfamiliar with and new to e-foiling might be really concerned at this point, but allow me to offer some relief and let you know that e-foils have lots of safety features, such as with these two remotes, for example. These are examples of two different brands of e-foil remotes. Both of these remotes have a safety feature and redundancy in the form of an auto safety lock, which mitigates the chance of a rider from accidentally or unintentionally pressing the acceleration trigger. In a separate video, I plan to discuss more about the importance of having an auto safety lock feature, whether it is supplied by the remote or some other feature within the e-foil equipment. I have been e-foiling for two and a half years and I am self-taught. Half of that time was with a prop guard and half of the time was with a completely open propeller. I have never been injured by the prop. Prop injuries are a bit like a plane crash. It's something that when you hear about, it's terrifying to think about, but it's actually a very rare incidence. The propeller is a little bit of a scapegoat or distraction from the other hardware and hazards that are beneath the water the mast, and particularly the wings. If you have never e-foiled before, I strongly recommend that you take a lesson so that you can learn all of the safety features and procedures, how to fall correctly, releasing the trigger or remote entirely when you fall, things like that. And you will have a wonderful experience and you'll be able to live life to the foilist on your e-foil. I'm not going to take the time to put this back on. So we are going to use the uh, stabilizer, the tail wing mount, as one of the supports of a prop guard or prop shroud. And the propeller spins in a, we'll demonstrate this real quick. And this is the Waydo Flyer 1 Kickstarter model. And if I barely spin this a little bit, you can see that it's spinning in a counterclockwise direction from your perspective. So let's go ahead and get a carrot. And I'm gonna show you here that we have this on power level five. It's a fairly low power, but it should be enough to get someone up to flying who is lighter weight, 150 pounds or so, uh, flying at minimal speed. So we're going to try power level five. Okay. It whacked it out of my hand. We got some damage to the carrot already. So, so let's use another one here. We're wasting so many carrots. <laughs> <laughs> They're not waste. We'll clean them up and uh, them All right. And we're going to hold it with just two fingers again. So it's loose. So it's kind of a, a loose uh, appendage. Don't you want it on the other side? No. No, this time it has resistance. Now it's demonstrating what happens when there's resistance or when it's caught inside of a prop shroud or prop guard. And chopped it off. Let's use the same carrot. We're going to go on this side. It's thicker. So 
We'll go, go again on the other side. I'm holding it with just two hands so it can potentially be swatted away. Two fingers. Two fingers, exactly. <laughs> Unlock. Swats it away. I'm scared. All right. Just two fingers. Unlock. And, uh, yeah, that, that busted it up pretty good here. <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay. I mean, you get the idea. A prop guard <laughs> or a prop shroud will not prevent injury entirely. And, in fact, it will introduce the chance of a greater injury, although rare. So, if you understand all of this and you still prefer to use a prop shroud... That is your choice, but at least you will know the risks. Likewise, you also know the risks and choice of operating an e-foil with an entirely exposed prop. More recently, there's been companies coming out with a jet or impeller option where the propeller is completely shielded or shrouded. If you truly are concerned about prop injury, you would be best purchasing an e-foil from a company that has a jet or impeller propulsion method. Live life to the foilist, ride safe. Yay. I'd be lying if I said no carrots were harmed in the making of this video. What do you think about the carrot, Jason? I thought it was scary and cool. Yeah. yeah. It was a carrot, it was <laughs> lice. And Tina was worried about her finger going <laughs> <laughs> no, I was worried about the carrot hitting the camera. Oh! Get the camera away from me.